to the presenters, Christos and Michael, for their interventions. And thank you very much, dear Luis, for inviting me. It's a honor to participate at this conference, especially as I am not an academic and not presenting, representing an authority. Um, well, some very different presentations from very different perspectives. Josina, uh, I would ask you to be very brief in your comment and your points. You have a challenging task to um, comment on these two interventions. Um, please, it's your turn. Thank you so much. First of all, I apologize for any coughing I will do. I will try and keep it to a minimal. Uh, and thank you, Luis, for uh, allowing me these brief comments. I've thoroughly enjoyed the conference. Um, and I think um, I will start with just a phrase from Elke saying, we have the roadmap, and indeed all of today has shown us there is a definite roadmap. We all know what needs to be completed, but we're not walking on the road yet. Um, and I think that, that for me was a very striking uh, phrase. And the second one came from Elisa Ferreira on a credible path. Again, credible. The word credible is key. And then to going to the last panel, um, I was very, um, very uh, taken with the discussion, A, on uh, who really are the future users of the financial system. And thank you, Felix, for that real uh, insight into that. You know, we have to face reality. It's going to be the older people with the challenges. We're not focusing on that. We keep thinking millennials. But it's the older people, Japanization. And then going to Gabriel, who speaks about conduct risk. Conduct risk is at the basis of the system. If you don't have good people, you can have all the regulations, all the systems, it's not going to work. And if it's not going to work, why the hell, and excuse the word hell, why the hell should, your, should investors come and invest? And I think that, that is really, for me, the key. And at CFA Institute, um, we, I represent finance professionals. We have an ethics charter, so for us, um, it's about bringing finance back for the benefit of society. And then I come to um, th the panelists, and I think um, both of them very interesting to put them together in a panel, by the way, um, but I, I, I think there is a link. Um, first of all, of course, on China. China is uh, and has been... Uh, a very dominant shadow banking system, and I also find it quite interesting, we use the word shadow banking again. We started using non-bank finance because we thought the word was too negative, and we've all started using shadow banking again. I think that says something. Um, and I think um, also some of the new developments are coming out of China. The fact that Alibaba um, is moving into payments um, and that other products are coming out of China. I think that is a challenge for, uh, for Europe. Um, we are an internal market, but we're also open. We have relationship with China. Um, we're very aware. Uh, Nout Welling, um, ex-governor of the Central Bank of, of, of the Netherlands, now work uh, on the board of a Chinese bank, is in our systemic risk council, and he frequently speaks about the shadow banking uh, area. And I think... You know, we need to think. Europe is a market, but Europe is also open, and Europe has geopolitical relationships. Um, Asia is is coming far more into our our lenses than is uh, the Americas. So I think that that was very interesting for me to see about the the system. It's not going to create the next financial crisis, but some of the elements. Uh, old age, some of the elements of shadow banking, we can learn from, and we need to look at, uh, at that market because it is a very big market. And then to Christos, um, and I have a love for Greece, I have a Greek husband, so I, I can, I've lived through the Greek crisis emotionally, um, and I think, you know, the banking union, of course, is that very pillar, is that very roadmap, and you create some challenging uh, future thoughts about maybe some alternative visions of completing EDIS and, and, and thinking about how to make that banking union better. But let me then come to you about, you know, those professionals, those people who are in that system. So we've done several studies where we do some blue sky thinking, uh, whether it's on the investment firm of the future, uh, or the question of trust, um, but also about the investment professional. And what is this investment professional of the future with all these challenges? What is he supposed to look like? So here's what. Adaptability. 
um, change, reacting to change. None of this is, is sort of very out, out sky, etc. But you need professionals who can handle change. Very often, when I talk to my ex-colleagues in the banking world, and I was for almost 17 years in banking, I see that they haven't moved on. They still live the same way. They still think about business the same way. And frankly, we can't have that anymore. It needs to change. It is becoming obsolete, this way of thinking. And it, this, this short term, um, not really thinking about the ultimate investor, that this really does have to change. And I come then to, 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 to real business conduct. Um, Gabriel, you mentioned the fact that, you know, it, it keeps on, conduct is looked at from every mis-selling scandal. So it's like a rolling ball. But surely, you know, you can never regulate for the next mis-selling scandal. So you're going to have to, at some stage, bring this insight into people themselves again. How to act ethically. And it's not about an ethics code. It is about a personal perception of you being able to act. And there, I think, these young professionals of the future, they have a different mind scheme. And I, I think they are showing, and I think on the environment, we've seen Greta Thunberg, so, you know, uh, they are willing to act. They, they want to act, they want to change, because they manifestly perceive that what we've done is actually not so right. So I think we have a chance there, and I think with changeability, soft skills. Again, soft skills is going to be very important. And what we have seen also is that collective thinking, working in teams with diversity, with different challenges, is going to be the future. It's going to create this very much this sort of collective thinking um, it, mindset. Again, I think um, bearing in mind how, how work is, is, is going to be, it's, it's going to be this, this mixture of work and life. But that is also when you look at the investors, some people who know me know I often speak about the balance sheet of life. I speak about that when you look at an investor, you don't look at just one particular side of him, i.e. the investor or the one that's going to take a mortgage. No, it is a person in front of you who is maybe going to divorce, maybe has high medical expenses when he's 40, or children that he needs to put through school and university. So there you have something completely different than just someone you're trying to sell a financial product to. And with that, I would leave you in saying that we've had a very incredibly thoughtful day. The roadmap is there, but the challenge is now to change from the inside and to really think outside the box. So I would leave you with that. Thank you very much. <laughs> Josina, for your, for your insight and uh, somewhat optimistic outlook. Uh,